Are you hungry for more Space Engineers 2 V-Rage 3 information? Well, you're in the right place. Today, I'll be breaking down and combating another presentation, this time given by Jan Hausek, the lead programmer at Keen Software House, working on the new V-Rage 3 engine. And now prepare your paddle boats, because we're going to be getting water. Now, as I said in the previous video, everything here is subject to change, and the things that are shown in this presentation might change multiple times in the development stages of V-Rage 3, or we might not even end up with some of these features, so just bear that in mind before you get too excited. I'm going to start by jumping into the deep end, and we're going to talk about water rendering. Now, Jan is super excited about this, you can tell it by the smile on his face, and for the moment they've only managed to work out how to get small pools working on this, but he believes that the water within V-Rage 3 is going to be game-changing. On top of this, they got a basic simulation going within Space Engineers, where they fire missiles at some small of dam, the dam explodes and water is released dynamically flowing down the hillside. Doesn't that look awesome? So we've got the exciting part of water out the way and I want to move on to the V-Rage 2 to V-Rage 3 comparison that Jan focuses on throughout this presentation. He also wants to justify building the V-Rage 3 engine rather than continuing to work on the V-Rage 2. So let's go over the reasons why they decide to develop V-Rage 3 and why it's going to be better than the V-Rage 2 engine that's currently used in Space Engineers. So what's wrong with the V-Rage 2 engine in our beloved Space Engineers? Well, Jen explains it looks good for a 10-year-old engine, but they've pushed it to the limit. Now it's reached this limit, Jan has identified the issues with V-Rage 2, and he starts by explaining how the engine is object-orientated, meaning it's very performance-heavy, and we've all experienced simulation speed drops. He goes on to explain how each block has an entity inheritance tree, and this means each block has physics, it has some basic textures, and some basic functionality, but the problem comes when they try and combine these inheritance trees of blocks, and they they can't make a block with more advanced functionality, or they struggle to do so. It makes it much more complicated. Moving on from that, they have got ad hoc threading. Even though they are utilizing and sending to three threads, the, where the information generated to be sent to these threads is very ad hoc, so it's coming from all over the place, and it sounds like they've got a bit of a spaghetti code situation on their hands after years and years of development, probably with multiple programmers working on it. Now, moving from that, they've got a very basic GI. So GI is all about lighting. So there's a lighting created from the character's point of view. So as you enter into a room, the lighting changes after a few seconds, and this kind of contrasts with the environmental lighting. So you end up with weird dynamic lighting effects, and it just doesn't look quite right, as Jan explains. Now, moving on from there, we need to talk about DirectX, and Direct 11 is currently being utilized in V-Rage 2, but we need to remember it's already had an upgrade from DirectX 9, and Jan explains they really need to get moving to DirectX 12, especially for consoles, and to stop the blockage within the pipeline in the CPU. On top of all this, they're still using the old Havoc 2012 physics engine, and I do agree with Jen on this, it's doing a really good job for its age, and some of the things it allows you to achieve with the physics and space engineers are really cool, and probably one of the massive attraction points to space engineers, but it's outdated and they can do better. On top of that, they have got various modding limitations. If you've ever dived into modding within space engineers, it is a difficult game to get into, and only through exploring and talking to other modders is really a way to get your foot into the door, so they think they can do that better. On top of that, they've got weak tooling, both for modding and development of their own in-game engine, so if they had better tooling, they'd be able to develop quicker and more effectively what they want to work on. On top of this, it's very unfriendly to develop on consoles, and if you've played on consoles, you've probably suffered with the limitations of not having the full capacity of some of the things that the PC version has got, so suffer no more because they're going to try and work on that, so V-Rage 3 will be much better for you console players. Moving on to the next slide, Jan explains how they are switching from object orientated to object and data orientated. Now the massive thing about this that Jan explains is that they can't just gradually change the code from object to object and data, so this is what's going to require the big rewrite, the completely fresh new engine. Now there's many of you that shout quite a bit at the Keen Software House development team saying, why don't you use another engine? For instance, why don't you use the Unreal Engine? And what Jen explains is that they spent about half a year with the team looking at various different engines, and we've covered this in another video where we looked in depth about their testing of various other engines, and Jen explains 
With the Unreal Engine, for instance, say they have an entity like a big red ship, it creates a hierarchy with all the individual blocks within that ship, and this makes a massive drain on performance. On top of this, there's some things that are hard-coded within the Unreal Engine that they want to be able to adjust, and because of this, they need to develop their own system for it, and therefore make the V-Rage 3 engine. Now Jam moves on to talk about entity composition, and this is all about opening more possibilities for blocks, more variety within the blocks. So currently, like we said before, the V-Rage 2 can only have limited compositions with a limited entity inheritance tree, but now with a new composition, it means they can insert things such as chair components, gravity components, so you can build a more advanced block, and modders will also be able to build more advanced and more varying blocks as well, something that's going to be extremely exciting for the future of blocks in space engineers. From here, Jan gets onto a lot of the systems that are gonna overall improve performance. And the first thing is the client and server architecture. And this decides if the client is gonna exercise a process or the server's going to. And they're separating this architecture now up into two separate areas. So currently it's all run as a big wad of spaghetti coding, but then that's gonna now be separated up so they can run things on the client side and the server side. They've obviously moved now to a job dependency graph so no more ad hoc lines being sent to be processed it's all going to be based at what has the higher priority and this system is going to be a lot better but Jan does explain there is going to be some ad hoc features such as the voxel systems that they've got in place but still this is a good move in terms of performance moving on with more in performance improvements we have the direct x12 render so a gpu driven pipeline so we've got more threads available for us to use on top of that we've got a ray trace GI, we're using the Havoc 2023 physics model, so that is going to be such an improvement in physics rendering. On top of that, we've got broader modding support, we've got an editor and a hub that they're going to explain in more detail shortly, we've got a console friendly based system, so this is going to be easy for them to code and write things to console, so console guys, you know, you're not going to be second class citizens anymore, you're going to have more features being able to be written for you and better. On top of that, they've got water, and they also want to improve on all of the features in the existing V-Rage 2 engine. It sounds like a giant task, but you can tell that Jan is passionate about this, and it's something that he's going to undertake and solve. Now, the next thing that caught my attention in the presentation was better support for modders, and Jan goes into great detail here, explaining how the use of partial definitions is going to help modders keep their mods up to date. Currently, mods are um, kind of built from an existing block you drag them over you customize it and that is your block created where now you can take elements from that existing block and when keen update their system it'll update your block at the same time with them same variables that'll keep your block in existence longer before it becomes outdated and requiring more maintenance on the modder's side and that does sound good because there's a lot of outdated mods on the steam workshop that i'd love to get my hands on and i don't think the mod is ever coming back to now the next slide that caught my attention was planet destruction and jan explains how different materials affect the damage to your ship so the top of this slide is sand and the bottom is rock and you can see with the rock the ship bounces off more and probably causes more damage where the sand that the ship hits and then sinks into it's very exciting and a very cool feature now the next one the planet atmosphere slide jen explains how they've come up with a solution for the planet flickering or tearing and when they're looking around you can see the voxels and how these things are rendering are no longer flickering for someone who's played space engineers for an extremely long time this kind of just goes to the back of your mind but this little solution is going to make things look a hell of a lot smoother so we're now onto the questions and the first question that Jan was asked is could someone make a client side HUD mod and then run it on the server and his answer is yes but there would have to be some limitations on the admin side of things and he goes into talking about players could technically use client side mods to cheat but of course this needs to be administrated and it's something I've experienced personally in Space Engineers that players have used client side mods to try and see through walls and catch other players off guard in PvP situations so it is a problem and it's still an existing problem but it's all about dealing with it from an admin perspective so we moved on to questions with this presentation and the first question that Jan was asked was all about client side mods and this was about could you make a custom client side HUD 
Now, Jan explains that you could have a custom client side HUD on a server, but the admin would have to approve of it. And he goes into a brief bit of detail explaining how you could have issues with this with players using mods to see through worlds and whatnot. And I think we've already experienced that in Space Engineers, and it comes really down to how admins kind of admin their server, or if they're going to run systems that prevent client side mods, or even have an, a list of allowed mods. So it does seem in hand, and I don't think cheating with client side mods will get out of hand because it hasn't with space engineers already now the next question is a two-parter one it's asked by two of the people one asks could water manipulate something like a dino and create power and jan explains yes yes it is possible and he explains they've also experimented with sucking up water into containers and then moving it elsewhere that certainly does sound exciting now the second part of this question was explained can water change from for instance ice to a gas and jan says yes this is something they'd, they'd like to work on and implement and they've also been experimenting with different flow rates such as lava and what happens when the lava meets water and it becomes a voxel so there's a lot of potential here but still you can tell that jan is a bit frustrated that they need to work on the overall water progress so far for planetary water first before they start messing around with making special things like this now the next question is about orbiting planets. There's a lot of players that want to see planets move within space engineers. And Jan answers this question as it's something they're not pursuing, but they have looked into. And it does create a lot of gameplay issues, such as you leave to go and mine, and now the planet's rotated around, you have to find your way back. Or if you're out in space, planets are actively moving or orbiting the sun and moving away from you. So it creates a lot more issues in terms of gameplay, especially when the player's down on the planet and the whole planet is now rotating. There's, there's a lot of factors that would need to be considered here from both a game engine perspective and also a gameplay perspective. So there's a lot going on with an orbiting planet and it doesn't seem like it's something that they're focused on right now. Now the next question that is asked is about aerodynamics and Jan answers with yes it's on their radar but he wants people to understand the impacts that things like this have on gameplay and that sometimes simplifying these mechanics makes a more fun gameplay experience and that's what they want to focus on the fun element they don't want to take the fun element of an out of space engine and make it too hard and I think that's something a lot of us space engineers get a bit too excited we like to get too complicated with things and in turn we make it too hard for ourselves. Now the next question asked, has V-Rage 3 affected the development of V-Rage 2 or the space engineers that we're playing? And Jan answers simply with, with no and he explains how they're separate teams. And from an outside perspective or my opinion, it would be silly to try and update the old engine with the new engine's features or else you'd end up with this weird hybrid and a lot of messing around for not really too much outcome. Now the next question that was quite interesting was would it be available for mobile devices and Jan explained that it was quite difficult already to develop it from the gamepad and he thought that Space Engineers was really in his opinion designed to be played with a mouse and keyboard and, and I agree with him when I've tried to play this on console it's so hard developing the controls for a, a console controller wow they must they must have struggled through that and the players that play on console I don't know how you do it it's amazing so that wraps up the presentation if you think I did a good job of compacting this video down hit that like button and I would really appreciate it if you want to check out this presentation in the full 57 minute long version then there'll be a link down in the description so check that out and I will see you next time